Welcome to episode 181 of Clarity Compressed. I am Paul J. Daly. I'll be your host. And today we're going to talk about the difference between career and calling. We're getting deep. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. So a few weeks ago, I was on a plane. My wife and I were going from Syracuse to San Francisco, and we had a layover in Chicago, and then, you know, so a short flight from Syracuse to Chicago, and then it was a much longer flight from Chicago to San Francisco. And that flight was probably, I don't know, four and a half hours, and the first flight was really easy. It was like an hour and 15 minutes, and we got upgraded to first class, so we were really comfortable. And then we get into the next flight, and the next flight, we were in a much different scenario back of the plane or toward the back of the plane and one of the rows that doesn't have any extra leg room. Now, um, I let Sarah have the window seat and I had you know a stranger sitting on my right and I was in the middle seat. So here I am, I'm six feet tall and I'm more legs than torso. So I just was not, I'm not at all built to travel at all um, on a plane especially. So I pack myself into the seat and a lot of you have had this experience and I got my butt pushed as far back into the seat as I can and my knees are still touching the seat in front of me. And Sarah looks at me, and she's like, wait, are your knees like touching the seat in front of you? Yes, they are. And this is a four and a half hour flight and I'm sitting there and I'm just praying that the person in front of me doesn't decide to put the seat back at all. Because if they do, then maybe you start to like put a little pressure on it. So like maybe they don't push it back so far. It didn't happen. We were okay. So I'm on this flight and I'm like two and a half hours in and I'm just sitting there and my knees are just like almost feeling like a little compressed in between, you know, the seat and the middle space. And the thought crossed my mind. Okay. I'm in, internally, I'm like, oh, this stinks. And then I just kind of catch myself thinking about these things. I'm catch myself like thinking, like having like a negative attitude about it. And I'm like, how would I feel if somebody said, I'm going to give you $2,500 to sit in this middle seat for this flight? So all you have to do is sit in the seat, and then when we land, I'll give you $2,500. And immediately I thought, well, that wouldn't be so bad, would it? Like, I'd get $2,500, and I can, I can deal with this, right? I'm just I'm being a baby. So that kind of changed my perspective on that moment. And I started thinking of some other things that I have heard recently that were kind of along the same lines. And one, the first one is a Simon Sinek quote. Simon Sinek says, working hard for something that you hate is called stress, but working hard for something that you love is called passion. And so in that moment, like when that hit me, I was thinking of that situation in the airplane seat, and I thought, it really is the perception of the struggle that really makes the difference because the $2,500 wouldn't make any difference as far as how much leg room I had, none whatsoever, right? My knees are gonna be pinned there. But it would have made all the difference because my perception of what was going to happen in the future or what I was enduring that little bit of struggle, please don't, don't feel like that was a real struggle. It wasn't, I was just being a baby. But enduring that would give me something on the other side that would be worth it. Like working hard for something that you love, working toward something that you are engaged in and you see value in and you see future growth and future hope in, believing in those things, actually that's what people call passion while wow, they're really passionate. And if you're not passionate about the outcome or what's on the other side, guess what? You're gonna hate it. It's gonna be miserable because of your perception is different. One of my, my favorite pastors in New York City, his name's Tim Keller, and, and I heard him preach a sermon once and he was saying, you know, imagine if you gave somebody a job and they had to work 16 hours a day, and it was hard, laborious work. They had to move rocks from one place to another all day, and it was kind of a pointless job, or the, you didn't see much reward in it, and you made him do that, and he could barely make ends meet. He could, you know, barely get his bills paid. He's living in the city, and you made him do that for 20 years, right? That would crush him if you paid him $30,000 a year to do that job. He goes, well, what if you paid him $30 million? Would it crush him? No. He'd be like, this is an easy job, and... I'm making all this money and like my future is secure. And I know that when I get done doing this hard thing, right, it will be worth it because I have all this freedom and opportunity to do these other things because of the job that I did. So this perception of what you're doing, whether you love it, what you do, you hate what you do, 
it's a makes a big difference the mindset that you choose to adopt in those scenarios. I'll be honest, after I thought of that that kind of like little scenario where oh, what if I got 2500 somebody gave me $2500 to sit in this middle seat. Would I think about this differently? Once I made that mind shift, actually it got a lot easier to sit in that middle seat because I realized like I was I was spinning it up in my own mind. I was the one making a big deal. I was making it worse. And then it kind of contextualized everything for me. And I realized like, oh, well, I'm going to spend my time and energy thinking about other things and enjoying other things and being productive in other things. I recently listened to a, a podcast. It was uh, Donald Miller's Pod Business Made Simple podcast. And he had John Maxwell as a guest. You're probably familiar with John Maxwell. Uh, you know, multiple, multiple New York Times bestsellers, writes on leadership. He's in his mid-70s now. And just a little note, like when someone's in their mid-70s, they might have a little bit more insight than someone that's in their 30s or 40s, right? Why? Because they're getting toward the end of the race, right? I, I want to talk with people who finish well, not with people who have all these great ideas on how you can start well. That's just my perspective, right? Somebody who's finished or has gotten really far down the race, like that's the person I'm going to pay more attention to because they've had time to get more experience. And really, we've been able to see in is their thinking, is their life, is their work proved out over time? So either way, Maxwell says, a career is what you get paid for, but calling is what you were made for. Career is what you get paid for. Calling is what you were made for. So I know a lot of us, you know, in this professional world, we punch in, we punch out every day. Uh, we have these careers. We're growing businesses. We're working inside of businesses. You know, we're doing our, our tasks and our role inside that career. And we see it, if we see it as a career, right, and we get paid, it's going to have that mundane mentality to it. It's just going to do that. However, if we start to look in there for the things that are our calling, right? These are the things that we were made to do. These are the things that we uniquely can invest into the people around us, into the world around us, into our legacy, into our families, into our friends. Well, then it becomes a calling. And when it becomes a calling, it actually starts to look a little bit like passion and a lot less like stress, even though the activities could be the exact same activities. I hope you're following me today because, you know, I, I spent a lot of time on LinkedIn specifically. And LinkedIn is full of this professional world where people are working on vocation and career. However, there are those people that you see and you realize like, oh, no, 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 no. This is actually a calling. This is actually what they're passionate about because they've made that mental shift. And it doesn't matter what their job title is. Uh, people that work in, you know, the executive a uh, line of work, people that work in the hands-on line of work. Um, there's a, a, a great guy that I'm friends with, and I'll tag him up in the comments, Bobby Rosa, and he designs pools, and he's out there, and you, you see the you see the mortar getting slung and the hard work of building custom pools being done. I, I gravitate toward him, Darren Doan, and making content. Gravitate toward him. Why? Because you realize they're living through their calling, not just their job and not just their career. You know, John Maxwell, at the end of his interview, he said, significance is what makes someone fulfilled. Stuff is boring. How many people do you know that have a lot of stuff that are bored or miserable or just unhappy and unsatisfied? Don't chase stuff. Just don't do it. Let's chase significance together. Let's chase meaning together. Let's make it something that even though what we do as a career might not be so relevant to somebody else's career, however, our calling can still be significant to them and those around us and anyone else that hears or interacts with us. So let's change that perception of what we do. Let's work on that today. Um, I'm in the fight with you. I just wanted to share that these thoughts have all come together over the last few weeks. So thanks for spending some time with me here today. I hope that this kind of lights a little fire inside of you, helps you pursue your clarity in a little different way, give you a little more perspective of where you are on the map so you can go where you are called to be. I will talk to you next week. We came to fight.